Hi, I'm Tom Edwards. I'm the Chief Digital Officer of the Agency Business here at Epsilon. And today, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the evolution of voice-based experiences, specifically voice base plus visual pairing and the potential implications for marketers and how to drive scale through these experiences. So let's talk about voice-based experiences. In 2014, voice experiences were almost negligible. Now, in 2017, they represent 10% of all search traffic queries. When, you, when that, you begin overlaying virtual assistants on top of that, that's 50 billion queries per month. By 2020, that's going to be shift up to 200 billion queries per month. So that's, that's an amazing acceleration. And what we've seen from a marketing perspective is about a year ago, I started working with the Amazon Alexa partner team. So I met with the team in Seattle, walked through the initial best practices associated with voice-based user experiences. Over the course of that year, you've seen the, the shifting of skills from a few thousand now to about 15,000 skills that are now available uh, to help enhance brands. Now with Google Home, you see kind of the evolution through Google Assistant to where there are now hundreds of actions that are available. And now you're seeing Apple launching HomePod later this fall and we'll see how the developer ecosystem is going to continue to develop there. While voice has been a key driver in 2017, in my opinion, what's really going to help drive additional scale and adoption is not just voice. Voice is great, but it's not the be all end all uh, in terms of, of interfaces. So what you're going to, what's going to need to happen is the shift from not only voice based to voice plus visual pairing so that you can have different types of interactions and different experiences depending upon what you're trying to accomplish from a brand perspective. So shifting into the how you actually bring these voice plus visual experiences to life, there are a couple of factors that you can take into consideration. So while I was at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona earlier this year, I saw the Sony Xperia Agent, which allowed video-based calling, integration of a screen in addition to a virtual assistant. This past week, Amazon released the Amazon Echo Show, which I have right here with me. And one of the core things about this is Amazon recognized that in order to continue to drive longer term engagement with some of the, uh, the voice based experiences and to drive additional user behaviors, such as browsing a different products that can map into a transaction quickly, uh, they felt the need to incorporate and integrate a screen into the Alexa experience. It's obviously it's a touch screen. It can take and enhance existing skills. And so there are a number of things. If you're a brand that already has built an Alexa skill, uh, an Alexa voice based skill, the show can simply enhance the companion card that's a part of the native application and show that as the core experience. But there's a lot more that you can do. So with the show, you can build off of additional visual templates so that you can actually map different visual cues as to what users can do within your skill. So various other intents that are potentially available. And uh, I'll demonstrate that here for you uh, quickly. Alexa, show me recipes for Asian food. Searching for Asian. I found the Asian salad, Asian salmon, Asian coleslaw, and lots more. You can choose a recipe by just saying its name, the number by it, or simply selecting it using the screen. Alexa, show me number two. Asian salmon. It has 4.5 out of 5 stars with hundreds of reviews and takes 1 hour 45 minutes. You can ask for ingredients or add the recipe to your favorites. Alexa, text the recipe to me. Okay, what's your phone number? So as you can see from that live demo, you're actually getting visual feedback based on your voice queries. This is a really key element when you start thinking about this evolution of multimodal computing, where it's no longer just about the desktop, no longer just about the mobile device, but you can start using voice, you can get visual cues, mapping of intents back to you, and enhancing different experiences. You also notice there's an opportunity to drive progressive profiling from within the skill. So there are ways in which you can leverage the flash briefings to deliver information via a skill. Now you have different opportunities to showcase different visual elements. If you have a catalog of products or you have a number of different elements that you want to maybe drive a promotion around a specific product within your skill. Now you're able to do that with visual cues and visual intents. 
This is a key point to consider as we continue to look at this role of both voice and now visual. And now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can actually extend that beyond just the Amazon show. Right now, there's definitely a larger footprint associated with other devices, whether that's the Echo, whether that's the Dot, and other Alexa voice services. So there's actually a way, and my team has prototyped this, that you can take and extend these voice plus visual pairing experiences at scale. So what we've actually done is we've taken the core Alexa voice service, and we've mapped that to browser-based responsive web experiences so that you can actually take and drive an experience across whatever form factor you'd like, whether that's through a mobile device, whether that's through a desktop experience, so that you can actually go beyond kind of the walled garden of what is the Echo Show. Right now, video has to be natively uploaded. It's tied specifically to a skill. But you can also take and enhance that experience. Sometimes people may have an Echo in their kitchen and they may be using an iPad to look up different elements of recipes. You can actually take and extend a voice plus visual experience directly to the browser, but still have it mapping back to the specifics within an Alexa skill that's not paired directly to a show. The show is great. It's the hot new toy right now, uh, but the reality is the footprint is still much larger from a voice perspective. When you start looking at Google's approach to voice plus visual, their approach is, is purely based on this idea also of voice paired into a browser-based experience as well. So what I want to do now is show you an actual prototype that I had my innovation team actually build so that we could actually demonstrate how this would potentially work. Enjoy the demo. Alexa, open NFL voice. Welcome to the NFL voice Alexa skill. Please open your browser and navigate to http colon slash slash inflavoiceqa.d.epsilon.com. Now, there are a number of ways we could actually get the URL. That could either be through email or we can give just a simple URL to start the experience. All right. Alexa, tell NFL Voice, play music. Okay. Go to NFL Music. Please speak a team name to hear their music channel. Alexa, tell NFL Voice to open Chicago Bears Radio. Okay, go to Chicago Bears Radio. The next section we're going to look at is the Madden NFL Club Championship. This is where we have esports related content housed. Alexa, tell NFL Voice to open NFL Club Championship. Okay, go to Madden Club Championship. You can say things like, watch live tournaments, scores, and stats, or team rankings. Alexa, tell NFL Voice, watch live tournaments. Okay, live tournaments. Alexa, tell NFL Voice, play video. Okay, play video. And as you can see, it's easy to navigate in and activate a video experience directly within the eSports experience. Alexa, tell NFL Voice to open Red Zone Highlights. Okay, go to NFL Red Zone Highlights. Say a number to watch a video. Alexa, tell NFL Voice to play video one. Okay, play video one. Alexa, tell NFL Voice go to main menu. Okay, go to main menu. To continue your NFL Voice experience, you can say things like, Alexa, tell NFL Voice go to NFL Music. Alexa, tell NFL Voice go to NFL Red Zone Highlights. Or Alexa, tell NFL Voice go to Madden Club Championship. So I've talked a lot about voice-based experiences, the benefit of voice plus visual pairing, a little bit about how to leverage the Amazon Echo Show, but more importantly, how you could potentially drive scale through voice plus visual experiences that extend through a browser so you can expand the footprint to incorporate devices that are also just voice-based. One other key point to really consider, as you're developing out the different ex user experiences tied to whether it's voice or voice plus visual, it's incredibly important to always design voice first because the visual component a lot of times is additive 
to the Pinchel experience. So it's still incredibly important to think about how the consumer is going to interact with both the voice-based experience, then the visual cues and intents you're going to need to display as you're creating a visual pairing experience to go along with that. This is incredibly important if you want to have a successful, engaging skill that people are going to find uh, useful over time. I'm Tom Edwards, the Chief Digital Officer of the Agency Business here at Epsilon. Have a great day.